Hello and uh, welcome to our latest uh, Business Spotlight interview. Today I'm thrilled to be joined by Martin O'Neill, owner and managing director of AMG Insurance Brokers. Hi Martin, how are you today? Good Richard, thank you. Good, good. Good, glad to hear. Uh, look, why don't you uh, spend a couple of minutes sharing with us who you are, what you do and uh, for how long you've been doing it? Yeah, no problem. Listen, many, many thanks uh, for the opportunity here. No, look, Mark O'Neill is my name. Um, I'm, as you said, the manager, managing director and owner of AMG Insurance Brokers based in Omen County Tyrone here. Um, for me, I suppose I'm actually, you'll probably tell by the accent, I'm not local. I'm from, from Dublin originally, um, living up here now about 13 years um, on the back of a blind date, married and settled and, and all that stuff now. Right. I've always been in the, the, the risk transfer and insurance uh, world. Um, when I came up here, I suppose I worked for some bigger institutions. Um, I saw that like everywhere else, the, the, the focus was more on satisfying the insurance company as opposed to concentrating on the client and the client needs. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was to, to establish an entity for myself um, that was really just client focused um, and put it out there. So, so far, so good. Um, my main objective, I suppose, is to ensure that a client is protected in respect of their assets, their people, their products, um, their employees, their, their patrons, the whole lot. Um, but really just getting to know, getting to know them, getting to know how they think and, and really just making sure that they're covered um, from an insurance point of view. Excellent, good. So, uh, I d tell tell me a wee bit more about that, Martin, because uh, often I see that uh, different people in the, I guess, insurance and financial services only focus on a narrow window of product offerings. So, are you more on like a personal protection, or uh, what what's what sort of product offerings are you doing? No, for me and for AMG, we, we focus primarily on commercial insurance. So really, it's from the point of view of the property, the liability, the business interruption and that sort of stuff. But, you know, we're, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. What we're trying to do is focus primarily on the client and the client needs. Um, what we want to do is, is get to know our, our model is, look, we're your commercial insurance partners. We want to be a bit like your, we want to be the insurance department in your company. Now, we don't care whether you're a, you know, a high street corner shop or you're a, you know, a, a manufacturing entity or construction company, irrespective of the premium we want to go, we'll see you. We'll see how you work your day to day. We'll go through everything with you. We'll look at what you have, what covers you have, what you might be missing. If you're not, we'll, we'll point you in that direction as well. But really what we want to do is just sit down with you, get to know you, work out the worst case scenario, the worst fears and Obviously, the budget as well, we have to be conscious of that and see what we can do to build a proper package to protect you and your people and your assets. It's it's that simple. Um, where I suppose we're unique is that we're, we're, we're wholly and solely client-centric. Um, if we feel that a client, and it's a privilege of being, I suppose, self-employed and, 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 and the boss, if you like, is if we feel that the client is not necessarily going to work with us, are for us and what I mean by for us is that they're not really going to value the advice we're given we won't engage with them sure sure now that, that makes sense totally and you've mentioned the client there several times so mm -hmm. who is your ideal client the ideal client is 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 anyone really that is invested in their own business um nobody and nobody is handed a business everyone has to work for it and, and, and work hard for it that's something i'm learning over the last couple of years sure. um, but really they see us as as a source of advice and a source of expertise they understand that the, the risks that are out there whether that's from a fire or a material damage or a liability or a theft or whatever else and they understand the importance of insurance it's not just a piece of paper insurance is one of these things that it's it's, it's in some ways it's a necessary evil and it only pays a dividend when something goes wrong. Sure. So you need to be very sure that when insurance is called upon, that it delivers. Because it's only in those times when it's questioned regarding its delivery or a claim settlement or something like that, that somebody actually goes through it with a fine tooth comb. So what we try and do is we do that at the start to ensure that in the event of X, Y, and Z happening, and your worst fear is materialising, the insurance company will do what they're obliged to do and pay that claim. So it's a little bit pedantic. It's a little bit of a pain in the backside from a client's perspective, but uh, and it's not always very cheap. But it certainly, in the event that a claim happening, it's it's one of these things that you're you're glad you have it in your hand. Oh, totally, it's it's, it's crucial, isn't it? So, um, mm. 
You, you mentioned there you've been learning a wee bit about uh, this yourself as a, as a business owner. So uh, what's what's the biggest learning since you've uh, become a business owner? Um, that's, that's, that's a tricky one, actually. The, the learning, I suppose, is that um, I'm not as brilliant as I always thought I was. That's number one. Um, I'm probably a bit more of a warrior now than I ever was because you're, you're not sitting in that Monday to Friday, nine to five, you know, switch off the laptop at five o'clock and you're guaranteed your, your wages at the end of the month. It's really just about, you know, growing, getting the name out there, building the book, protecting the clients. I'm probably more pedantic now about protecting the client than I ever was from the point of view of saying that, look, you know, my business is is, is really from the point of view of, of, of word of mouth and referrals from clients. Sure. And if you do a bad job for a client and if that claim isn't paid, well, that's going to spread. Whereas if you go the extra mile. So for me, I'm learning that it's actually, yeah, I, I have to push myself that bit more. I have to, you know, really give myself a bit of a, a, a kick in the backside every now and again as well to remind myself that, look, don't do this if I don't push this extra couple hours in the evening. I'm not going to be paid. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a great motivator, Mr. Have to, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. So Martin, when you're growing up, is this something that you'd always wanted to do? Um, I can't say that this specifically was was always what I wanted to do. It was where I grew up in Dublin. Dad was was very heavily involved with a, a very big um, sporting institution, the GA, and he was yeah. head of legal and insurance. So we were always kind of brought up in an environment of the importance of, I suppose, the risk management and and the insurance and that kind of thing. And I suppose it it, it kind of intrigued me an awful lot. Um, for me personally, I suppose it was always about you know working with people doing something different every day and believe it or not, actually protecting and, and, and caring a little. So yeah. it might sound a little bit cheesy or a little bit corny, but what I do on a daily basis, I feel is that I protect people, I protect their assets and I, you know, I pr protect livelihoods as oh, sure. much as I'd like my own protected. Yeah, totally. And uh, when you, when you see, um, you know, that X, Y, and Z that you talked about earlier, when those things happen and people don't have the protection in mm -hmm. place, the the outcome can be devastating for everybody around them you know so it's 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 awful um and you do see it um and, and like you went you asked earlier on there regarding the ideal client unfortunately the ideal client is a client that has been stung before as mm. a result of either bad advice or under insurance or an insurance company not paying out yeah um and they're the one they're the ones really that you have to you, you know that you can work with um, there are also ones that you can use as an example to be able to say to people, look, you know, these poor unfortunates were in that situation. It's not that they cut corners. It's just that they didn't really fathom that things do go wrong. They can sure, go yes. wrong. And when they yes. do, you need something to, to, to pick up the tab. Of course. Yeah. Well, uh, tell me, uh, what, um, what's been the biggest issue that you've overcome uh, being a new business owner? Ooh, I suppose mixing mix and work and family that's very difficult um for me i had i had a, a, a triple hit i had covid i had the birth of um twin boys and then i had the business starting a couple of months after that so it was really trying to marry everything um i would like to think that i'm quite personable so engaging with a client across a desk you know is the way i like to do business i like to get into the nitty-gritty see the business see the assets see everything and, and, and walk the site really Yes, yes. When COVID struck, that was very difficult. You know, obviously you're doing the likes of this, the Zooms and whatever else. Um, and again, worrying that bit more, worrying about bills, worrying about overheads, you know, worrying about making sure that you have enough time dedicated to home and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, um, yeah. but yeah it's a learning curve. It continues to be. I'm sure having twins was the biggest learning curve. <laughs> 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 it's still, it still is and it's something yeah. um yeah it's it's but again you know a, a great motivator as well a great motivator to stay out of the house yeah. but also a great motivator to ensure that the work is the work is done to to pay You're the bills yeah many congratulations on them uh Thank you. my 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 two were not twins but they're they're young adults now so uh i uh, i wouldn't relish going back to to, to those days uh, where you're, you're, yeah, counting the, older, you're, you're, you're counting the hours sleep on one hand. 
we're not we're not too bad at this stage. But uh, when we when we set up there nearly, I uh, got two and a half years ago at this stage. The, the the twins were only I think three or four months old. So, yeah. but again, like everything else, if you don't do it, you don't try it. it you don't go of anywhere. So, of course. So, what have you learned about yourself during all of this journey? Um. Again, I suppose. Uh, I suppose that I don't compromise in, in respect to the principles, um, to be quite honest. Yeah, um, yeah. I, to, maybe to my own detriment, I've probably turned away more business than I've taken on because I simply won't compromise. I'm taking, I'm taking business in that I don't feel would, would, would marry very well. Um, yeah. I can't say that uh, I don't like seeing insurance companies paying out claims. But I certainly wouldn't like to see any client taking a hand at trying to, you know, trying to induce a claim or anything like that. But unfortunately, there are clients or customers or, or companies out there to try that. Yes, so yeah. I would like to think that the integrity of the business has always, you know, been, been stack, you know, been, been still, I suppose, and and, and and very, very good in that regard. So, um, yeah, just irrespective, you're not going to go for the quick book. You're going to spend your time. You're going to do whatever else. Um I suppose maybe I've learned that I give a lot of free advice that I kind of go in and, and, you know, I don't necessarily have that, that killer instinct that, yeah, I want it. I'm grabbing it. I'm taking it from good luck. Yeah. Um, but there's always the next year. That's the beauty of insurance is that if you do somebody a turn one year, you don't necessarily take the hand off them. Sure. They come back and they remember you the next year and they, they respect you that bit more. So it's, yeah, that's, that's, I suppose, one of the things. All right. Yeah. 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 And like, like, you made, like you mentioned earlier, you know, when you work, uh, with integrity and work with people in the right way, then they will refer you, you know. Uh, absolutely. And that's what my business relies on. Um, really? Yeah. You know, a couple of things that I've learned is that you have to, you have to watch every penny like everything, you know, like any business irrespective. Um, and you have to watch where you spend your money, you know, be it through marketing, be it through sponsorship or whatever else. But the key to it is from my point of view, what I'm starting to realize now and what's paying me a dividend is doing the job properly. Sure. And looking after a client. Excellent. No, great, great sharing, Martin. So who inspires you in business today? Um, I suppose I'm not necessarily an old fellow, but I, I see a, I suppose a younger generation coming through that kind of kind of hit all bases. Um and one in particular locally in the town. Like I love the idea of entrepreneurship and, and that sort of stuff. And yeah. there's one individual in the town here, a guy called Richie Donnelly. And uh, he's a he's a Tyrone footballer. He's an All Ireland winner. Um, he's a degree in finance, a master's in finance, and whatever else. But he's set up a business a couple of years ago called Nature and Co. Um, and that was basically like a, a cafe kind of fitness center, a well being center, if you like. Yes. Yeah. And from the day and minute he started that, he never deviated from his principles. He built this and he grew it and he grew a culture around that as well. Um, on top of that then he's gone he's done other things with Falcon Finance and whatever else but I love to see that grit and determination with, with, with you know the, 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 I suppose the, the calibre of, of the young people that are coming through the ranks now they're into everything the, the well-being the mental you know the mental awareness the fitness yeah. the education it, it's fantastic so anybody in that line anyone that has you know the grit determination to, to, to do something like that I take my hat off to you know but Richie certainly would stand out to me you now Great, great, and great, great to hear a local example. You know, very, very mm -hmm. often we have people who uh, are talking about maybe one of the dragons that you've always seen on TV, or the people who are in the top mm -hmm. of business all over the world. But it's it's great to hear yeah. uh, people referring to to local examples, and that's that's what I love about the mm -hmm. the spotlight in Northern Ireland. Very often, you know, the best example for somebody has been one of their parents or one of their relations, or like you've just said, so, somebody in their local town or city. So that's great. Mm -hmm. do, do you have any sort of favorite books or podcasts that you go to for motivation? Uh, I do, actually. And it was uh, funny. It was referred to me by a fellow who, who set up on himself a few years ago. And he said that when you're your own boss, you're not answerable to anybody. Yeah. And he said, sometimes you need the legs taken from under you. And he introduced me to Grant Cardone. And Grant Cardone, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he has this book and, and, and podcast series. I don't necessarily listen to the podcast series, but I do have the, the 10X rule. And it's a great little kind of pull you back into the real world kind of yeah, sense. Yeah. You know, it kind of holds you, it gives you a little bit more accountability. So 
every now and again when I feel like I'm losing a bit of motivation or whatever else, I tend to turn that on in the car and it, it directs you again, you know, um, and reminds you that you, if you don't work, you don't get it. It's as simple as that. That's it. That's it. So what would you say to anyone thinking of going into business for themselves? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily jump into it. I would be thinking, right, think of the situation you're in. Think of what you want to do. Um, certainly do your business plan, do whatever else. Um, don't rely on anybody else, only yourself. One great bit of advice I was given was that when you start out on your own, the people that you would expect to do business with you might necessarily, but people that you wouldn't would be the ones first in line. And it, it's a very strange one to think. It's a very strange one to say, but it's the reality. There can be a little bit of begrudgery. There can be a little bit yeah. of, you know, resistance. There could be a bit of, ah, well, it won't last that long. Why would I bother getting involved? But I think anyone setting up on their own, I'd say certainly go for it, do it. Um, but be very sure that you have all the I's dotted and T's crossed in respect of what you want to do. It's a hard slog. Um, it's a lot of sleepless nights. It's a lot of worry. But there's an awful lot of rewards, not necessarily financial rewards at the start, but there are an awful lot of rewards from the point of view of just even something, you know, an idea, a theory, a business just growing and growing and growing. It's, it's yeah. fantastic. Excellent. Uh, great advice. And <clears throat> finishing up then on advice, what is the best advice you would give if you could turn the clock back and uh, there was an 18-year-old Martin there? <laughs> um, <clears throat> invest in, in hair dye. Um, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. No, I suppose. <laughs> For myself, um, I suppose it was always I was always very focused on work and stuff. Maybe relax a little, see a bit of the world first. Um, enjoy yourself a little bit more. It's not all about work all the time. Um, yeah. Maybe study a little bit more. Definitely, um, I only really pursued my my qualifications and that sort of stuff in respect of, of the insurance side of it later yeah. in, in in my career. You know. Um, but which a lot of people do, and there's no issue with that. But it's something I suppose. Yeah, just maybe. Relax a little bit more and it, 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 it'll all come good. Good, good. Look, Martin, <clears throat> been a pleasure having you on. I uh, really appreciate all your sharing, all the nuggets of wisdom and uh, the good advice. So uh, thank you very much and all, all, the, all the very best going forward. Richard, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good to see you and talk to you soon.